G'day folks and welcome back to Beck's Basics. So today we're going to talk about what you need to plant in your garden if you're planning on just feeding your family out of the garden. So if you're going to feed your garden exclusively out of your garden, if there was no other way that you could feed your family and your garden is the only way, then what do you need to plant? What are the best plants to plant in your garden so that you can feed your family? Now we're going to um, recommend um, the things that are the easiest for you to grow um, and remember of course that you know it depends on the season depends on where you are um, so in some areas like the snow mountains for example of Australia we, we um, lived in the snows for a while and there's really only one growing season so everything you grow to eat you have to grow it in summer um, there is no winter growing there because it's too cold um, but generally in most other areas of Australia you, you get two growing seasons um, even if you get a wet season there are some things you can grow there as well um, but we're going to recommend the things that we think are the, the easiest to grow um, and things that are going to give you the best yield um, now one of the things that um, you need to consider is that if you're feeding your family if it's an emergency or if there's no other food supply then there's a psychological element to feeding your family as well. And what do I mean by that? So it's important to make sure your family has enough nutrients, but it's also important to try and fill their tummies up. Because if somebody's hungry, they're gonna be cranky um, and they're not gonna function very well. So one of the things we're gonna to do today is try to recommend things that are going to help to fill tummies up, um, as well as giving you nutrients, particularly little kids. You know, they, they want to be full, they don't want to be hungry, and you don't want them to be hungry. Um, it's distressing as a parent to see your child hungry. So we're going to recommend that as well. Um, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to recommend plants that are what we call cut and come again type plants. So um, vegetables that aren't just a, you know, a one trick pony. They're not just going, you're not just going to harvest them and then you get nothing else off them. Um, in large measure, what we're going to recommend today are things that you can continue to harvest over the course of the season um, and your plants will continue to grow and continue to give you a harvest and I'll explain that as we go along. Some of them you can't do that, that with but some of them you can. Um, so we'll go through that and give you our recommendations. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a longer video than our normal videos because there's quite a lot to cover today and I want to explain it very well so you get a, a comprehensive idea of, of what you can do. But before we start, just one favour, we're trying to um, sh help and show as many people as we possibly can how to be more self-sufficient and to feed themselves out of their garden. So I'd really appreciate it if you could pause your video now and hit subscribe and share the video as well. Once you've watched it, if you're happy with it, share it with your friends um, and help them to, to start a garden or to grow a, a garden or to get better at gardening or whatever they, they need so that they can grow food for themselves. So do us a favor, hit subscribe, share the video, give it a thumbs up um, and that'll help to, to spread the word and, and help other people. So let's get into it. Uh, we'll start with summer because we're in summer now so it's easier to show you what we've got growing in the garden in summer now but we'll show you what um, what you need to grow to sustain your family now first of all tomatoes not just any tomatoes cherry tomatoes and the reason i recommend cherry tomatoes rather than regular sized tomatoes is that they're much easier to grow and they're much less susceptible to fruit fly and other pests and diseases with cherry tomatoes you get a, an ongoing crop so these cherry tomatoes i've had we've been eating out of for at least two months now probably two and a half months and you can see they're continuing to crop they're continuing to grow there's more growth up the top here they're continuing to grow continuing to flower uh, we will get more um, cherry tomatoes off these probably for another two months um, now we've got um, a number of cherry tomato plants in um, and we probably get about uh, good three or four punnets of cherry tomatoes every day off these. You can see, you know, here's a, um, what we picked um, just this morning or yesterday, and uh, we'll get that at least uh, every day. And over the course of the summer holidays, we were just eating um, fresh salads off out of the garden. Uh, we didn't really buy a lot of other foods. So cherry tomatoes is our first pick. Definitely put those in your garden continuous as I said cut and come again vegetable um, or fruit uh, in um, technical terms for for tomatoes 
cherry tomatoes are the first. Next one, cucumbers. Cucumbers are very easy to grow. Um, really, you know, they're not attacked by a lot of pests. Aphids, you've got to be careful of because they can um, ruin your, your crop. But cucumbers are great. Um, again, they're a good cut and come again. You can see cucumbers under there um, growing and doing really well. Um, and they grow really um, easily. Good thing about cucumbers too is they don't take a lot of space if you grow them up a stake. So this is just on, you know, one bamboo stake, um, just growing up there, and that won't take a lot of space. Um, you can see it's flowering. It will get cucumbers on it. So not a lot of space. And the great thing about cucumbers is they go really well with your cherry tomatoes. So you can make and bulk up a, a salad um, really easily with with cherry tomatoes, and that'll make it more filling. So if somebody's having, even though it's a salad. Um, it's, a, it's a hearty salad, not just with lettuce leaves and that sort of thing. It's a hearty salad with good, dense um, vegetables in it that will fill someone up. So cucumbers is the next one. Next one, carrots. Carrots will grow almost all year round in Australia, um, almost anywhere you are. They're really, really easy to grow. They, you know, almost no bugs attack carrots. They grow under the ground. They don't take up a lot of space and you get a really high yield. And the great thing about carrots too is they fill tummies up. If you eat them raw, they fill you up really well. So they're a really great vegetable to grow. Um, you know, and the other great thing about them too is you can just leave them in the ground until you're ready to eat them. You know, not, event, not forever, obviously, because they'll start to go woody after a while, but um, they, they don't take up a lot of space. You can generally harvest them as you need them. Um, and they're really good tummy fillers. So carrots are the next suggestion. So next one, perpetual leaf spinach. Now that's this stuff. I'll show you the packet here. This is perpetual leaf spinach. It's not silver beet, it's different. This is the stuff that you get when you're getting uh, little leaves in salads. Um, so it grows a little bit different to silver beet, but it grows in the shade which is great if you've got um, uh, a shady area. It'll grow in the sun as well, but it grows really well in the shade, particularly in the hot summer. It's good to grow it in the shade because then, then it doesn't bolt to seed. Um, and uh, it's really good because, again, it's a cut and come again vegetable. You don't pull out the whole thing. You just take off the outside leaves and it keeps growing and growing and growing. This has been growing for probably about four months now um, and it just keeps producing. And I probably get... Um, you know, a big bowl of, of spinach every um, two weeks um, off just these few plants here. And, you know, that's enough for, you know, three or four meals um, for um, spinach. And we make all sorts of stuff with it, you know, fry it with onion, garlic, etc. Um, but perpetual leaf spinach is another great one. So next one for summer and actually all year round is radishes. So... The reason I haven't got radishes growing at the moment is because they're finished. Um, but radishes are great because you can plant them out at the same time and in the same bed, in fact in the same row, as your carrots. And it helps to thin your carrots out. So, And radishes grow really, really fast. So you plant your carrots with your uh, radishes. So you put the seeds together and plant them together in the same row. Um, and you um, pick the radishes as, the, as they're ready and that'll make room for the carrots. Um, radishes are great again they're great in a salad um, but they're nice and dense as well so they'll fill tummies up a little bit peppery so you know you may not like them but they're a really good food if you're looking for something um, a little bit extra um, as a survival food then of course beetroot you can go past beetroot full of nutrients very 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 easy to grow um, doesn't take up much space it just you just throw it in the ground and it grows um, and full of nutrients it's really good you can you can pickle it so that it lasts uh, a bit longer but again it's a great one it doesn't take up a lot of space high in nutrients um, a great one to grow uh, in summer so the next one is beans beans are great for growing in summer they're again really really easy to grow um, you know, it was probably one of the first things with pump, along with pumpkins that I learned how to grow as a kid um, because they're so easy to grow. Again, they're a great um, vegetable to grow because uh, they continually crop. They'll crop for ages and ages and they're a great tummy filler. Um, you know, might just think, oh, it's just a bean, but you have a handful of these. If you're really hungry, that'll, that'll satisfy your, your hunger, hunger definitely. Um, so beans are another great one. They don't take up a lot of room. At the end of this video, we'll, we'll talk to you about how many 
plants you need to have have or how much space you need to have in each of these vegetables so stick around for that but beans are another great one really good tummy filler so if that's all the space you have if you plant those few things they will fill up your family that'll be enough food for you to plant for you and, and grow for your family but we'll talk about a couple of additional ones as well now these next three vegetables are only necessary if you have additional space if you have no other space plant the ones that I've just talked about um, just now cucumbers tomatoes carrots etc just plant those they'll be enough for your family they're lots of nutrients and they'll fill your family up if you've got additional room plant some of these ones first one potatoes now you don't the reason I say you don't have to plant potatoes is that you can survive without them Potatoes, if you're going to grow potatoes to sustain your family, you need to grow lots of them. Um, because, you know, from each potato plant, yeah, I know that on the internet it might say you can get, you know, 20 potatoes off one plant. But in, re in reality, you'll probably get four to five decent sized potatoes off a plant. Um, and if you've got a family of four people, that's one plant per meal. Um, so if you plant 50 plants, then that's 50 meals um, so and they take up a, a fair a, not a lot of space but they do take up some space um, if I was to feed my family just with potatoes I'd have to dig up my whole backyard and plant it and I probably still wouldn't have enough food for the year but potatoes are good if you want to put um, an extra thing in um, if you've got the extra space plant some potatoes and then corn now corn is a particular one I know it looks like there's lots and lots of food in that. There's actually not. Um, you know, there's a big cob inside that. You're going to take off the husk. You're going to take off the silk, and you're going to rip, uh, you know, strip the corn kernels off that. I know some people eat the the um, the cob of the corn. And yeah, you can do that if you're starving to death. Um, certainly wouldn't discourage you from doing that. But in general terms, the you can only eat the the actual kernels that are on the outside. Now the other thing with corn is it takes up a fair bit of space for not much yield. So off each corn plant, um, you you get two maximum, but mainly about one to two cobs of corn. And they use a lot of water. They need a lot of fertilizer. They, need, they don't really get um, attacked by pests or anything like that, but they need a lot of water and fertilizer they will suck the fertilizer and the water away from everything else around them and they have to be planted in blocks you shouldn't plant corn in rows unless the rows are really close together and you've got multiple rows next to each other because they are fertilized and pollinated rather by the wind um, so they're not pollinated by the bees they're pollinated by the wind so the, the this brown bit down here this, the the um, uh, the silk up the top you know that that um, the pollen in that falls down oh, well, sorry that from the flowers on the top that falls down onto the onto the silk and that pollinates the, the corn and so it has to be planted in blocks so you need space so corn's a particular thing um, you don't surprisingly you don't get a lot of food off it if you're going to grow corn use the three sisters method which means that you plant corn you have runner beans growing up the corn stalks and then you have melons probably pumpkins would I would recommend um, growing underneath them um, so that you're maximizing the space that you use for your corn but you know if you've got some space plant corn um, but use the three sisters method so you're utilizing that space well because there's really not a huge yield of corn the last recommendation for summer is pumpkins um, now the reason I recommend pumpkins if you've got the space and only if you've got the space is because they actually they just, they'll just run in amongst everything else. So you can plant them in a little mound and the plants will weave their way in between everything else. And that's why you can use them in the three sisters method with, with um, corn. Um, so you know, while, while you um, wouldn't necessarily use this as your, as your first go-to, if you've got space and you've got room in between your other plants, plant some pumpkins and they'll run in between um, everything else so there are recommendations for summer now let's get on to winter okay winter so the easiest place to start is carrots so just keep the carrots going keep your carrots going all year round succession planting of carrots again tummy filler they'll grow all year round plant them 
with radishes. So you'll have um, the two crops together. You'll have carrots and radishes growing at the same time. But carrots are a great one. Just keep them growing. They're a fantastic tummy filler. They'll grow all year round, including in winter, and grow them with your, your radishes. Next most important one in winter, peas. Now, peas are very high in protein. And so that means that they're gonna fill tummies up. Very good for you. As I said, high in protein. But the, one of the most important things I could say about peas is grow a variety that you can eat the shell. Most varieties like green feast, other varieties, um, the, the shell is too stringy to eat. You just can't eat it. If you grow um, ones like sugar snap, you can actually let them grow so that um, you can eat the whole shell. You can eat the shell and the peas inside, and I'll show you. So when you're growing them, you pick them whole like that, and you can just eat the whole thing. You see that they start getting plump. They start, you know, let the, let the peas develop inside, so you've actually got whole peas in there, and then you can just eat the whole thing. You just literally eat the whole thing. You don't have to shell them. You eat the whole lot, just like a um, snow peas. You eat the whole thing, but they've got peas inside them. So you're actually eating the whole thing. Um, and the great thing again, sorry about that plane going over. The great thing again about peas is that again, they are almost cut and come again um, varieties. They'll continue to crop, just continue to pick the peas. They'll continue to grow. As long as um, the weather will allow you, as long as the, the season will allow you, keep the powdery mildew off them um, because that can affect the leaves, but treat the powdery mildew and they'll continue to grow. So peas are a really good one, particularly because they're a tummy filler, high in protein, um, and they'll continue to crop and you'll get lots and lots and lots of peas off, and they're a fantastic winter crop to grow to feed your family. And here we go, classic silver beet. Now a lot of people call this spinach, it's actually not spinach, it's silver beet. Um, it's the stuff you buy in the supermarket that they call spinach, it's actually silver beet. Um, but you grow it, it's a, another one of those cut and come again, um, vegetables you just peel off the outside leaves when you're harvesting them and it'll continue to grow all winter and you'll get loads and loads and loads of spinach it's it's high in iron it's a great vegetable to 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 have and it'll continue to feed your family you can do lots and lots of stuff with it um, but the, the main reason I recommend it is it because it's a is because it's a cut and come again vegetable you'll just continue to grow continue to crop for you and continue to provide food for your family and doesn't take up a lot of space next one broccoli broccoli is a great one to grow in um, the colder months um, and the reason i recommend that is because you can actually eat so all of this green stuff here that we normally cut off you can eat all of that don't chuck it away eat it it's nice and um, uh, dense so again, it's a good tummy filler. You get the greenery on the top as well with all that green nutrients. But you can there's lots and lots that you can eat of the broccoli. Um, and when you cut it down, leave the plant in. It'll grow back. Um, so it'll grow back smaller shoots on the side. So you continue to get more and more broccoli um, off your broccoli plant. So broccoli is a really good one to grow in winter to feed your family. Next one, Brussels sprouts. Again, cut and come again. You will, um, as you harvest them, so see how in the picture there, it's got them growing up the, the stem? That's because you can harvest them and the plant will continue to grow up like that and um, it'll continue to grow more and more Brussels sprouts for, for you. So it'll continue to crop for you. The Brussels sprouts are nice and dense. You can do lots of things with them. Um, they'll fill tummies up, lots and lots of nutrients in them. Um, so they're a really good one because they're a continuous cropper. You don't need a lot of plants uh, for, for Brussels sprouts, but they'll continue to crop for you and continue to provide food for your family instead of just being a one-hit wonder, a one-trick pony. Um, you'll continue to get food from Brussels sprouts, lots of nutrients and a great tummy filler and continuous cropping. So another one that's great to grow uh, in winter is cabbage. Now, cabbage takes a long time to grow, but the good thing about it is that you can pickle it and put it away. So there's going to be times when you're kind of in between crops, so you need to have some things put away. Succession planting is really uh, planting is really important so that you can um, have continuous crops, but you do want to have some food put away as well. So you want to be, like with your potatoes, you want to be um, wrapping them up or putting them in a, a, um, a cool, dry area to, to store them for when you need them. Um, and cabbage is the same. You can, you can pickle it. 
um, and put it away for those times when you're kind of in the off season, you don't have a lot coming out of the garden. Cabbage is a great one. Again, it's quite dense. Chop Anyone that's chopped up a whole cabbage knows that there's a big mountain of cabbage there, so there's a lot of food in one cabbage uh, for a family of four. Um, so you can eat it all at the same time or you know, make soups with it, which of course makes it go so far. You throw all of these vegetables, and that's one of the great things about all these winter, winter vegetables. You can make them into a soup. Um, and they go a long, long way. Um, so you're not just eating just those things. You know, the great, that's, like I said, that's the great thing about winter vegetables. Make, they make fantastic soups, which fill tummies. Um, and cabbage is a really good ingredient in soup like that. And you can also preserve it um, for when there's nothing coming out of the garden. A couple of other good things um, to grow in, the, in your winter garden for survival, kale and broad beans. Um, they're both really good, both prolific um, uh, croppers, particularly kale. Um, if you're going to let the leaves grow to full size, they grow really, really big. So you get lots of food off, off kale plants. And broad beans are great too because, again, they're filled with nutrients. They're really good tummy fillers because they're nice and dense. Um, so they're a really good filler too. So kale and broad beans are also good ones to plant. And then last but not least, if you've got space left over in your winter garden, onions. Onions are really, really high in nutrients. They don't take a lot of space. They do take a long time to grow though. Um, whereas other things like, um, you know, peas, you'll be getting food off them in, you know, two, three months at the most. Um, but onions take a long time, months and months to grow. Um, but they're really high in nutrients, very dense again, um, and very good to grow if you've got that extra space. Um, throw in some onions um, because it's really important to do that. The other thing too, if you still have extra space, chuck in a couple of fruit trees. Um, things that are dense, like apples, really good fruit trees to grow um, if they're suitable to your area because they'll, again, fill up tummies. What we're trying to do here in a survival situation or if there's no other food is to fill tummies and get nutrients into people. You're not going to get fat um, when you're eating survival food or just eating out of your garden. Um, the idea is to sustain life to keep people um, fed nutrients, full, full tummies. So plant some fruit trees that are going to um, uh, give, you, give you fruit that's going to fill up tummies and provide um, nutrients if you've got them. If you don't have a lot of space, but you do have a little bit of space, get some miniature trees. Um, you know, I'll give you an example there. Here's an example. This is our miniature lemon, tr lemon tree. It's just in a pot. Um, we don't have a lot of space for fruit trees, but li miniature lemon trees, this has got, what, four lemons on it? We've only had it for a few months, um, but it's got lemons on it. And then over here, we've got a miniature mandarin tree as well. So that's giving us some citrus fruit. They, you know, they're very, very, very hardy. Um, you know, aphids and probably um, citrus leaf scale are probably the only things that attack them, and they're really easily um, addressed. Just have a look at our other videos for those. But miniature fruit trees, dwarf fruit trees, are really good. Just buy them in your local nursery and pop them in the ground as well. Um, so they're the kinds of things that you want to put in for your winter garden. Now let's talk about how much you need to plant. Okay, so how much do you need to plant? So for some, let's start with summer and with cherry tomatoes. So with cherry tomatoes, for a family of four, I would recommend 10 plants. They don't take very much space. This is a space of 1.6 meters here and there are six tomato, cherry tomato plants in there. So I would say another one of those with, um, or probably another one and a half of those with uh, you know, another four plants in them would be sufficient for a family of four. They will continue to grow. As I said, they'll continue to crop. So 10 cherry tomato plants, 10 cucumbers, six cucumber plants. That's all you need, grow them up a stake that's all you need to do. That's plenty of sp plenty of uh, cucumbers for you. You'll, you'll uh, continue to get cucumbers. That's all you need. Six cucumber plants. Then carrots. Now this is our next um, lot of carrots. Um, for carrots, you need five one metre rows of carrots. Um, you can see how little space they take up though. This, this pot is 450 millimetres wide, 800 millimetres long. And I've got three rows of carrots in here. That's all you need. So if I had you know, just one more pot this long, that would be sufficient carrots for me to grow for the whole of the summer for my family. So carrots, five rows at one metre long. Next, perpetual leaf spinach. So for perpetual leaf spinach, for, for a family of four, 20 plants. 
they don't take up a lot of space here as I said these are just growing down the side of my house there's about 12 or 13 plants along here in the space of probably one and a half meters they don't take a lot of space up it's not very wide um, so about 20 plants of perpetual leaf spinach then beans that's green beans same as the carrots five one meter long rows of bean plants so all you need five one meter um, long rows of these they don't grow very high they need a tiny little bit of a trellis um, not much uh, they won't grow very high um, but five one meter rows of uh, of green beans and as i said the radishes can be planted with the carrots so you don't need any extra space for the radishes just plant them at the same time and with the carrot seeds you don't need any additional space so that equates to the same thing five one meter rows uh, with radishes in them but they're in with the carrots so you don't need any additional space five one meter rows with radishes and carrots together and then the same with the beetroot i would recommend the same thing five one meter rows of beetroot um, they're very easy to grow to don't take up a lot of space um, but five one meter rows of those then if you've got room for potatoes i would say 50 potato plants sounds like a lot but you've got to feed your family for a long time so 50 potato plants you need a bit of space for them 50 potato plants are best grown in the ground you get the best yield out of them if you're growing them in the ground so 50 potato plants and then if you're going to grow corn same thing 50 corn plants uh, but again if you're going to grow corn six um grow it in the three sisters with the pumpkins and the green beans or the, the climbing beans actually is what you want because they'll climb up the corn if you're going to grow corn you'll need 50 plants that'll give you should give you 100 cobs of corn now you need to think about how you're going to preserve that corn because you, you can't just eat it all at the same time and it will go off um, and be careful with corn caterpillars love it um, so it's a little bit of something to look after like I said it takes a lot of food um, and a lot of water so it's a little bit of a pest to grow but if you want to grow corn three sisters method watch the caterpillars um, lots of food and and um, drink for the for the corn um, but about a hundred plants and you need to think about how you're going to preserve it you might want to consider um, being able to freeze it or can it or even dry it if you dry it um, you can rehydrate it or you can grind it up into, into cornmeal as well and use that to, to make um, bread and, um, and various other baked goods with it. But um, that's what you do with corn, 100 plants. And so the other thing to be mindful of too with your summer planting is succession planting. So with cherry tomatoes and with the cucumbers over there, you want to be planting your first batch in early spring, your first lot of plants in early spring, and then plant more a month later and then more a month later because what will happen as they die off I'll show you so while these ones these cherry tomatoes are starting uh, are still cropping they will die off eventually and that means that these ones over here will take over for them um, so succession planting is really important about a month apart so plant your first lot in spring then about a month later or six weeks later put in your next next lot then a six weeks or a month later the next lot so you've got continuous cropping for you know five four or five at least months um, with your summer planting and that goes for every vegetable that you plant um, succession planting is very important your carrots your um, tomatoes your cucumbers um, everything that you're going to plant um, get your succession planting work, worked out okay now let's let's move on to how many winter vegetables you need to plant we'll start with the carrots again carrots and and radishes again same thing five one meter rows plant the seeds together harvest the radishes first which will give you room for the carrots to grow um, but five uh, one meter rows of those two together so then your sugar snap peas now these are going to be a staple for you if you're just eating out of your garden these are going to be a staple for you over the winter unless you've got food saved from summer like potatoes saved from summer and carrots and those sorts of things your carrots will will be um, part of that staple as well um, but your peas are going to be important so you want 10 one meter rows of those so that's 10 meters of peas 10 one meter rows um, they'll grow, you'll need a trellis for them, but 10 one meter rows of peas is what you'll need to sustain your family. So get those, um, that sorted out. Again, you want succession planting for those so they continue to grow across the, the course of the winter. So again, same thing, 
once a month, plant your next um, lot of peas, next lot of carrots, your next lot of every vegetable so that you're getting a succession um, planting of, of vegetables so you're getting, getting continuous cropping. So 10 metres, so that's 10 1 metre rows or you know five, 5 2 metre rows or whatever it might be, 10 metres of peas. Okay, then silver beet, similarly to the, to the spinach that we had in summer, you want 20 of those plants. Same thing, they don't take up a lot of space, 20 of those. But you don't need to have succession planting with your spinach, or your silver beet rather, or your spinach for that matter, um, because they'll continue to grow. As I said, they're cut and come again, they'll just continue to grow, so you don't need to succession plant those. Then Brussels sprouts, you want, I would say, 20 of those plants. 20 of those, again, so you're getting plenty of them. Um, probably don't need to succession plant those as often. You probably want to do that about halfway through the season. Um, have your next growth in there, probably about six weeks. So about you know, six weeks after you planted the first ones, um, succession planting of Brussels sprouts so you get that continuous growth right through the cooler months. So 20 Brussels sprout plants. Same with the broccoli, 20 of these plants, but you do want to succession plant these because you know, although when you cut them they will grow back a little bit, they'll be smaller shoots. So every four weeks, plant um, a new lot of, of broccoli. So 20 broccoli plants with a succession planting of the same, same number. And with kale, um, you want to have probably 10 plants of that. I know that's going to be a lot of kale, but it's a leafy green, right? So it's not going to fill up tummies too much, uh, although it is a little bit filling. Um, so I would recommend 10 kale plants if you've got the room for them. And again, if you're planting broad beans, five meters of those, so five one meter rows or whatever configuration you want to with the broad beans. And then we've got cabbage. So the cabbage, you want about 20 plants because you're going to be putting some of these away. So 20 cabbages uh, you want to be planting. And then with the rest of this space, onions. Just plant as many onions as you can get and uh, get into the space that you have and just fill it right up uh, with onions. Um, you can't get too many onions, so just as many as you can plant in the space that you have. So that's our advice, our recommendations for um, what plants to and what vegetables to plant for summer and for winter planting, uh, winter and summer cropping. Um, the, there's not too much there to plant in a suburban backyard. You don't have, even have to dig up your whole backyard. Um, you know, if you're going to plant potatoes, you'll probably have to dig up your whole backyard. And if you're going to plant corn, you'll probably have to dig up your whole backyard as well to plant enough of it. But if you're just going to grow the, the, uh, the other things, you know, there's plenty of room in a suburban um, yard to plant those things. Um, I would recommend, as I said, getting some, um, some fruit trees in as well. But, you know, there's, there's, it doesn't take a lot of space to grow enough food for your family. It just takes effort and it takes planning because the succession planning is a really important part of that um, but you can certainly plant enough food in a suburban backyard to to sustain your family if that's all you have to eat i would highly recommend though that you take a look at our um, food storage videos as well because one of the things to be mindful of is not every season is ideal you might get a season where it just rains all the time and so your tomatoes you know they may not ripen. Um, you know, your potatoes might rot in the ground. Um, you know, you might not get enough rain. Um, and so, you know, if you can't water them, then your plants won't grow properly. Anything could happen. You could have an infestation of, of some sort of bug. You could have a locust plague or you could have a mice plague or, um, or an aphid plague or something like that. There are, you know, gardening is, is one of those um, uh, activities that's very subjective to a number of different things and you have to really be onto it it takes a lot of effort to to do it so that you're feeding your family um, but it can be very very rewarding but you do have to be mindful that your crop could fail um, and it's happened before so make sure that you have a supply of food um, of other food to eat um, check out our food storage uh, videos on that subject um, so that you can you know, have that supply of food so that if you're just 
um, so look, planning on sustaining yourself as far as food goes, you have a supply, you have a backup if your garden um, fails or doesn't produce as well as you expect it to for the year. Um, so um, you know, it's really uh, important to be mindful of that. So uh, hopefully those tips have been helpful for you. Um, you know, we're, we're here to, to answer any questions. Put your questions in the, in the comments. If you have any specific questions, we'll be happy to answer them. Um, but hopefully that's uh, been really helpful for you. Thanks for joining us on Bex Basics. Again, make sure you subscribe and that you share this video with your friends to help as many people as you can um, to be more self-sufficient and have the satisfaction of feeding their own family. Thanks for joining us on Bex Basics. We'll see you next time.